Hi, uh, my name is Phoebe and I'm 24 years old and I live in Hertfordshire with my friend Emma, who's behind the camera now, helping me film this video. Um, and I also live with my cat Angelos, who's down there, he might appear later on. Um, and I was diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder when I was 22, I just turned 22. I'm filming this video for Petra's Place Therapy Centre in London today to compensate for the fact that I'm not able to be there to talk in person for National Autism Week. Um, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we're all um, socially distancing or physically distancing. Um, but Mary Rose, the clinical director there, she sent me some questions and topics in advance. This is a really difficult and unprecedented time for everyone, uh, having to you know, adjust our lives and how we live them, um, particularly those for those with autism um, who survive and thrive on routine. Um, I hope that anyone who's struggling can find some comfort and peace in, you know, the unknown um, at some point soon. I know for me it's been really hard, um, but I'm trying to just use the time to kind of really immerse myself in things that I enjoy. Um, I actually read on an autism Facebook group the other day, which really made me laugh, that, um, you know, they didn't understand what all the fuss is about because we're autistic and we've been wanting to socially isolate ourselves for years <laughs> so I thought that was quite funny. So I first came across Petra's Place in 2019, the beginning of 2019. Um, I was looking for a placement to, at the, as part of my uh, master's degree training, I'm training to be an art therapist. Um, I'd previously studied an art degree and knew that I wanted to channel my creativity and my artistic expression into helping people um, in one way or another. Art therapy just seems like the perfect way to do that. Um, and I met Mary Rose and spent the next seven months after meeting her up until September of 2019 doing my placement, my first year placement there, uh, working at the centre. Um, I met a lifelong friend at Petra's Place in one of the speech and language therapists, Alice. I was really lucky to be able to build amazing therapeutic relationships with the children and families at the centre uh, and I felt a really valued part of the team, like the clinical team, which is something I'd not really felt before in other places of work and, you know, at school. Um, the experience I had at Petra's Place was invaluable in my professional development as I'm kind of finishing up my training now, um, but also to help me understand my autism better and also autism for other people. Um, it's a learning process and I'm getting to know it kind of more and more every day. Okay. I got my diagnosis relatively late um, when I was 22, um, but I went through my entire kind of childhood and adolescence knowing that something wasn't quite right. Um, I was a school refuser, I was diagnosed with depression, anxiety, OCD, I had daily panic attacks about going to school. Uh, I found it really difficult to make friends and retain friends. Um, I had a number of kind of specific obsessions, I was you know, ritualistic, I collected stuff, um, I was solitary as a child, struggled to fit in anywhere. Um, all the things that I saw my peers around me enjoying, I just hated and dreaded, like birthday parties, being in the school play, PE lessons, um, and I remember really distinctly when I was in year three, I overheard a teacher say to another teacher about me that I was so stubborn, and that stuck with me until recently really, because um, when you're that age you just believe what adults tell you. And I kind of grew up thinking that I was stubborn and intolerant and rude and it took me a while to kind of shake those things off about myself. And I was actually in the same class as twin boys that had autism and the connection was still never made. Uh, and I saw them being so well supported and never got enough of what I needed. Um, and looking back, knowing everything that I know now about autism, I can't believe I slipped through the net, really. But generally, I was just well behaved, followed the crowd, and I think, looking back in an, in another way, I probably just went unnoticed. 
And then when I was maybe 14 or 15, there started to be more information in the media about older children, girls, and adults being diagnosed later with autism. And I started to see lots of similarities between those people with a late diagnosis and myself. Um, as a teenager, really struggling, couldn't fit in. Um, people didn't really get me and I didn't really get anyone else either. Um, but it still took me like another six years to kind of find the courage and what and the words to, of what I was going to say to the GP. Um, but I'm so glad that I finally did when I was about 21 um, and he was so kind and so understanding and took my judgement of what I thought it was and how I felt as enough to make the referral to a psychologist um, and that was an ASD um, diagnostic clinic for adults so specifically diagnosing adults not children um, so it was a really quite a specific service and that, and that was on the NHS and I was I was really kind of apprehensive about coming forward because I envisioned myself having to justify to someone why I thought I was autistic and the reality was that I've never actually had to do that um, at all since getting my diagnosis or before when I was trying to get that diagnosis. The psychologist that I was referred to um, analysed lots of information about my whole life um, and it was really great to have someone recognise my hardships but also help me to highlight my strengths because I've got lots of both, I've had lots of hardships and I've got lots of strengths and they've all moulded me in lots of different ways. Um, it came out that my mum had um, really quite a difficult pregnancy with me and the birth was traumatic for both of us. I was a quite an unresponsive um, unsocial, unhappy baby. The psychologist from that was kind of able to make lots of links from my infancy to autism that not anyone else had really noticed before. I wasn't really surprised when I was officially diagnosed with autism at 22 um, because it was just like the missing puzzle piece that I would, had been waiting for. Um, I felt really failed for a long time by the adults that should have worked harder to meet my needs when I was a child. Um, but now I'm just, I'm just so glad that I found it in myself to go out and get the answers, um, you know, when I was able to. And having a diagnosis has helped me understand myself so much better and feel more confident in my identity and confident to go out and carry on adding the building blocks to my identity, if that makes sense. I'm an autistic young woman and I'm still learning about that and I'm really proud of that. So yeah, some advice to my younger self, I think, um, I don't know, younger Phoebe, it's probably a bit cliche, but everything is gonna be all right. Um, I wish I'd known that my diagnosis was coming and that it would answer all of those unanswered questions that I had. Um, it's a shame that I couldn't have done it sooner. It's a shame that I couldn't have seen that coming sooner. Oh, hi. <laughs> this is Angelos. <laughs> um, yeah, it sounds silly, but everything got a lot easier when I stopped doing what I thought I should do and started doing what I actually wanted to do. I found a huge sense of peace in terms of my identity by just dyeing my hair pink. Um, and it's been like this for five years and I'm never changing it. I'm wearing clothes that I don't irritate my sensory problems. Um, as I've got older, I've got more comfortable in telling people what does and doesn't work for me. Um, and there's a huge sense of empowerment in that. So yeah, go to your GP, get it out in the open, keep trying until they listen to you if you have to. Uh, take someone you trust with you if that makes it easier to talk or maybe write it down in a letter to the doctor and let them read it if you're worried about you know, talking to them face to face in person. Um, and know that like a late diagnosis is increasingly common, like you won't be the first person that's gone to your doctor and, and said those things and you won't be the last. It, it's happening more and more um, because we've got an increased awareness now of what autism looks like in women. And it's very different to what it looks like in boys, men. <laughs>
Um, also, there's lots of really helpful information on the National Autism uh, website, the National Autistic Society, which is specific to autism in girls and women. Um, so you can go in kind of armed with the facts if you're worried that someone's not going to take you seriously. I feel really spurred on um, by the fact that I slipped through the net as a child to make sure that this happens less often, that the children that I work with therapeutically get all of their needs met and their strengths and weaknesses are recognised and supported. Um, it's so satisfying to be able to say that I really understand to a family or to a child in the midst of you know, getting a diagnosis or struggling you, you know, with facing the diagnosis um, and getting to know their autism. Um, I'm able to say that I understand and really mean that and speak from experience and I'm so passionate about autism because it's my life and I don't know any different. Um, I love that my autism informs my work in art therapy every day, um, that's really unique I think. The training to be an art therapist has shown me my own sense of empathy and patience and their qualities, like I said earlier, you know, that would that I was told as a child that I didn't have. Um, so to be able to see myself now, knowing that I do have those qualities, um, is really satisfying. Um, you know, it turns out that they are there and they're uncondi unconditional um, to the clients that I work with. And I hope that that comes out in the work that I do. And, you know, I always acknowledge that children are very perceptive and they'll get an idea of you long before you think they have. Um, so I'm really aware of that. I think it's all about kind of proper understanding and acceptance. Um, I hope that as more girls and women are diagnosed, um, this will become much more commonplace in our society. I think there's still kind of a widespread misconception that only boys have autism or that you're only autistic if you're non-verbal or pre-verbal. Um, and I hope that because I am able to speak up about my experience, I can be kind of an advocate for the, the girls and just people with autism in general that feel less able to speak and that I can kind of help play my part in setting the record straight about what autism really is. There's huge non-verbal sensory elements to art therapy that I think children with autism just naturally favour. Art therapy practice encompasses a deep understanding of child development and child attachment. Beyond the paint and play-doh, there's real scientific and psychological theory underpinning our work. The research of Simon Baron Cohen, who's part of the Petra's Place Advisory Board, is hugely influ influential and groundbreaking um, in helping us understand children with autism and the, and the condition in general. Um, and I'm really inspired by him and his passion for the work that he does. In my experience of using art therapy with children at both Petra's Place and in other settings, um, the successes can be found when you find your way into that individual child's unique, special world. Sometimes I have to adapt my skills and really stretch myself with what I think art therapy should look like to engage a child and meet them at where they're at and recognise what they need as an individual. I always look at what a child likes and is good at rather than focusing on what their weaknesses are and then I think those things will naturally improve if you're recognising and kind of nurturing the strengths. There's some uh, reading that I've found really helpful, um, mainly when I first got my diagnosis but as like a constant reference point for autism. The first book is uh, Asper Girls by Ruby Simone. Uh, I don't have a copy here because I read it on my Kindle, um, but that's about a lady with an autism diagnosis and her life, she's married, she's got kids, and it's all about her experience, um, and that's a really good read. Um, and then there's two here that I do have copies of. Um, there's The Autistic Brain by Temple Grandin, um, which is kind of like the aut autism bible in a way so that's a really good one um, and then there's Camouflage The Hidden Lives of Autistic Women by Dr Sarah Bargela um, and the illustrations are by Sophie Standing and it looks like that and it's like a little it's kind of a um, like a graphic novel in a way and it's really beautiful 
Um, and there's not that I've seen, there's nothing out there like that um, on this subject, so that's really nice. Um, so they're things that I've read that I found really helpful. I'm really honoured um, to have been given the opportunity to share my experience and story. This is something I've never done before, um, but I've wanted to do for a long time. So I'd like to thank Petra's Place and Mary Rose for giving me the platform to do so. Um, I hope you've enjoyed watching and found it helpful.